Blog Talk Radio. show the great thing is we're back we're back and we're back well back here in 2024 hope everybody had a great new year we're going to get the new year started off on the right foot tonight on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk show definitely want to thank our great sponsor Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce so delicious and addicting you may need a support group Want to thank our great sponsor, Chef G's. You can visit him at flbbqsauce.com, flbbqsauce.com. Check out any one of the four great flavors. You have Heat Wave, Original, Fusion, and Honey Mustard. Can't go wrong with any of the four. Great thing is, tomorrow get a chance to see the legend himself, Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce, to start the year off right. Going to go ahead and have breakfast with Chef G's, but you guys can go ahead and have Chef G's anytime you want by visiting flbbqsauce.com. We're going to go ahead and play a great tune by Sam Scola, the Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce song. All of the music tonight is provided by Sam Scola. If you want to sign Sam Scola, please reach out to me right here at Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. We will make that happen. Sam Scola is a fantastic songwriter man has wrote over a thousand songs he is truly awesome i really appreciate sam skull and his wife mary definitely reach out here at the allen alfred sports Talk show here is the chef cheese florida barbecue sauce song we'll be right back after that great tune more to come a lot more to come on the allen alfred sports Talk show Thousand for variety, Chef G's blowing up barbecue sauce, a natural flavor. Chef G's blowing up barbecue sauce, Florida gold honey mustard on burgers and ribs. Tasty fusion on pork and sausage, a classic. For chicken steak tips, a hot heat wave on meatballs and ham. It's a cookout treat. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Serve on fish and vegetables. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Chef G. Florida barbecue sauce, Chef G's, 
Lord, a barbecue sauce. All right, that's the Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. So delicious and addicting. You may need a support group. Definitely don't forget. Check out Chef G's at flbbqsauce.com. Again, it's flbbqsauce.com. Can't go wrong with that great sauce. So I'm going to go ahead and describe to you my thoughts on the XFL-USFL merger. I'm going to do that first, and then we're going to go ahead and kick off the show. A lot of people are really interested in my opinion on this topic. So I have to kind of speak from the heart and tell you my, my thoughts and overall opinion about the XFL USFL, which is merging into the UFL merger, new team, new league. And I said on the show about, about th- almost a month now, almost a month now, First and foremost, let me talk about the Orlando Guardians. Let me do that first, because that's only fitting. I said about a month ago that I did not believe the Orlando Guardians were going to survive this merger. I just, it wasn't official. There was a lot of reports that was coming out that the Guardians were not going to survive the merger. And I, I felt like that probably was going to be the case. But believe it or not, what convinced me to go ahead and say about a month ago on the show that the Guardians were not going to come back, I was confident about that, was actually a season ticket holder. Season ticket holder was kind of like nervous and scared that the Orlando Guardians are not going to come back. We were communicating via messenger. And then I said, well, the only saving grace that the Orlando Guardians have You know, it's not a it's not a secret. They didn't draw well as far as the attendance. I said the only saving grace they have is two things. They have a great relationship with Camping World Stadium. And it's a really nice stadium. And the second saving grace was the fact that Danny Garcia, one of the owners at the time, had a home in Orlando. But as we were communicating, I said, well, she lives in Orlando, but she is building a house in Virginia. And when I said it out loud. It dawned on me at that very moment that the Orlando Guardians were not going to come back because she was building like a library type mansion. And at that moment, I knew that she probably was going to, she was going to move to Virginia. And for those who don't know, they call it the DMV, DC, Maryland, and Virginia. If you live in any one of those three states, you can get to any one of the three, DC, Maryland, or Virginia very easily. So the D.C. Defenders, I felt were going to be her new home team instead of the Guardians. And I hate to say it, I called it. I was right on the money. Unfortunately, the Guardians did not survive this merger. As a person who's covered the, the Orlando Guardians for the 2023 season, I will have to say it was electric. It was magnificent. And you would not expect that from somebody who covered a team that literally won one game. For those who don't know, the Orlando Gardens were one and nine. The only game they won was at the time the undefeated DC Defenders, who were 6-0 and at the time. And that's the only loss they had outside of the championship game. But I made so many great people throughout that year. That season, I should say, family members, players, coaches, I knew everybody there in the Orlando Guardians, literally in the entire organization. So the person who I would have to say I feel the worst about because of this merger, there's a lot of people I feel bad about, players, coaches, fans, is, believe it or not, is head coach Terrell Buckley. And the reason why I feel the worst for him is because of the fact that I had literally interviewed him about 50 times. The team won one game. He was working extremely hard to get his get back and make season two great and kind of like rewrite the ship. 
Unfortunately, he won't get that opportunity, at least with the Orlando Guardians. I pray that he gets another opportunity because I know how this looks. Somebody could look at his record and say, you won one game out of nine. Why should we give you another opportunity? The man's a great coach. He deserves another opportunity. So I also lost an opportunity to cover the Guardians because of this merger, as well as Seattle Sea Dragons are gone, and as well as the Vipers. So that's just on the XFL side. The USFL side lost five teams too. That's the disappointing thing about this merger is the missed opportunities as well as, you know, there was eight and eight and now it's only eight teams total. So it is less opportunities because of the merger. I think long-term it's going to be a great thing, but I think short-term it's going to be tough. That's my feeling about this merger. There is a lot of fans that are upset because of the merger when I opened up my social media today, I seen that they officially gave the refunds for the teams that they're no longer coming back. So at least that's good. People are getting their money back in their account. I saw quite a few posts about that. But I will just say there was no, the, the question is, are there any surprise in the announcement? There actually wasn't any surprise except for one. The only one surprise is the fact that they're going to keep the Arlington Renegades name and they're going to use the Grambler's team. So instead of being at four and four even, which I thought they're going to keep the Gamblers over the Roughnecks, they keeping the Gambler players, but keeping the <laughs> Houston Renegades name. So that was the only surprise out of the entire announcement. My personal opinion, it is going to be eight teams. I would have liked to see 10 to 12 teams. I felt as if that would have given a little bit more meat on the bone to start with. Of course, you know, logistically and financially, those things are two different stories. The teams that did survive the merger, I would have to say, you know, you can't really argue those teams. Those were the teams that drew the, the most. That was the one thing that I have to say to the fans that are listening, because I know there's a lot of people interested in this topic. This is the first time I had to deal with the team actually leaving when the Tampa Vipers left. It wasn't just the Tampa Vipers left. The whole league, the XFL went out. This is the first time I actually lost the team. I'd have to say for a person who was promoting the league consistently throughout the entire 23 season, the learning lesson here is that if you have a team that comes into your city, support the heck out of them. Support, support, support. Share, post, ask your friends to come down buy tickets, buy the merchandise, support, because you may not get another opportunity. So that's the overall thing. I, I definitely feel bad for the players that are leaving or don't have opportunities. The good news is I did see props to Devin Darrington and props to Cody Latimer. They both have been signed already by the San Antonio Barramas. So props to them. I'm going to give those guys a round of applause. And how this is going to change spring football, I believe that this move will, for the time, make spring football something that will be a viable thing down the road. I will say this much. It is not set in stone. I do think there are some things that I won't speak about publicly that I think there's opportunities for the UFL or XFL, USFL, UFL to improve on. But they are now like rebranding. They're restarting over. And the question is, how will things change moving forward? A lot's going to change. You know, there's going to be a different dynamic in the way the league is. As far as the Allen Alfred Sports Talk show and coverage of the UFL, I will let you know, first and foremost, I am a big supporter of spring football. I am also a huge supporter of players, opportunities, coaches, opportunities, football, promotion, whether that includes the Allen Alford Sports Talk show or not. I support guys getting it, girls getting it, athletes all around. Having said that, though, I'll let you know where we're at at the league. I did let the league know that I am interested in pursuing and interested in continuing our great relationship that I did have with the XFL. It's a different dynamic now because it's merging. I did let them know that 
communication twice. I have not heard a response back yet. So that's where I'm at. I don't, have, don't know just yet. I mean, don't be alarmed just yet. This is the same thing that happened when I try to get in with the XFL. Try to knock on the door a couple of times. No answer. I kept pursuing. Lo and behold, I got to cover the XFL for the entire year. So at this point, I don't have an answer for you just yet. That's where I'm at. Again, I did reach out to them a couple of times, letting them know that I want to continue our relationship and help promote the UFL. I have not heard back from them just yet. I have, however, have on the good news, I have just want to say a couple more things. I have reached out to, I won't say who, but person who was, who is working with the Orlando Guardians, a contact. They did tell me after speaking to them directly that they are still gainfully employed, but just like everyone else, they actually don't know where they're going. So that's where we're at on that. So it's, it's not just me who's kind of not getting all the communication just yet, but time will tell. I will tell you this much. There's a lot of great things that I've already lined up for 2024. You guys are in for great surprises, great coverage. I won't spill all the beans on the first show, but I will say congratulations. At least it's over now. We got the official announcement. We at least know who's staying, and who's going. Being on in between for the last two and a half months has been kind of crazy. At least, I will say, at least it's a sigh of relief that it's over. We know what the outcome is. Props. I want to say a couple last thing is props to all the fans, players for the Orlando Guardians, for the Seattle Sea Dragons, and the Vegas Vipers. You guys did nothing wrong. Props to all the coaches. It was out of your control. Props to the five USFL teams that are leaving and their fans, players, and coaches. Again, you guys did nothing wrong. I've been in corporate America for over 30 years. And I know how business can do kind of things like this. It's not your fault. Don't take it personally. But we're going to keep this. We're going to keep it moving. In fact, I had to go ahead and make sure you guys understood all this. We are going on to talk to our fantastic person in 2023. It's going to be fantastic 2024. And the man, we're going to bring him on right now. None other than the legend himself. Hey, how you doing, Lou? Uh, thanks. I don't know if I call myself a legend, but well, thanks. <laughs> Well, you legend my book. I apologize for the long wait. I had a lot of people who wanted to hear the XFL part. I wanted to make sure I got yeah, that all I'm not out. Surprised at all. We knew we knew this was going to come. But Mother's Bell comes at price, and some teams, of course, well, shall I say, just didn't make the cut. But I don't think it happened in the um, in the NFL uh, AFL merger though back in 1970. So uh, you know, I don't think it's it's the same way. But I wonder how this is going to go over. You know. I mean, you know, we've had, you know, the USFL with this. Uh, they tried to merge with the NFL. Look what that ended up. So now we got this uh, with the useless football league. I mean, the UFL. Sorry. Oh, know. my goodness. He's already taking digs. <laughs> you know I'm going with that somewhere, folks. Come on. You know, you know I've known the show for years. And you know what? And you know why I don't like something or it sounds kind of weird. You know I'm getting – I'm going to go into it. <laughs> yeah. So, so down to 18s. But, you know. It, there comes there comes a price with murder. Some teams, you know, just um, well didn't have the didn't have to survive even despite a, a loyal fan base. But sometimes it's not enough, and sometimes the murders uh, things have to go. I mean, yeah, you're right. It's, 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 a, it's a sad fact that you know, you know, you have the teams that you supported, but um, just not enough. And you no, lost you're absolutely it. right. And you lost it. Yeah, ten. Now you're down to eight. So that's, you know, it's, it's, in other words, it's a shrunk your league as well. Yeah, I agree. I, I would have liked to see 10 or 12 teams. I, I don't, I didn't expect yeah. to see all the teams survive the merger. I never thought no, that no, at all. I never thought that at all. I hope, I hope the fans that are listening understand that. I never thought that when they merge, 
that I was delusional that, oh, they're going to join 16 teams. No, not at all. No. Not at, not even for one not even for one minute. I can honestly thought that that was going to be the case. I personally oh. would have liked 10 to 12 teams, somewhere like that. But, however, of course, in the other mergers, uh, some teams, you know, didn't make the cut because only, I think, only four teams from each of the um, from the WHA and the NHL and the W and the NBA and ABA, I mean, only four of those teams, uh, you know, went on to the NHL and NBA. So it has happened. You know, Kentucky didn't make it. Um, the, only four, the only four that made it were um, Indiana, the Nets, the Nuggets, and the P-Brains, the Pacers. Sorry, yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's the part that is a drag, is that you said it perfectly, yeah. Lou, that not everybody survives. Not everybody. And to your point, the team that I felt was probably the team that got supported the, a lot and didn't survive was on the XFL side with the Seattle Sea Dragons. I think the reason yeah, why they yeah. did away with the C- Seattle Sea Dragons is because of logistics. It's just too far away. I think yeah. that created a problem, travel. So I think Seattle is kind of like a victim of circumstance more than it was support. Obviously. Yeah. And and I will say this, you know, for the fans who are really, really disappointed that you know, if you support the new league, there is a possibility, I believe, that some of these teams might come back. You know, I don't think all of them, well, but I think they, I, don't know how I think it's uh, possible. You know, it's possible. I don't see how they'll work that out. I mean, you know, not right away, but um, it's, it's a possibility it could come back. Yeah, I mean, they have three teams in Texas. That That was the biggest gripe that a lot of people said, like, hey, you got three teams in one state. Well, so does the NBA. You got Houston, exactly. you got Dallas, and you, and, you know, you got San Antonio. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know. So fact of this, that. This goes back to what I was saying at the beginning. You guys got to support your team. You got to support. You know, you got to support because, like you said, you got three teams in one state. The Texas got three teams in one state. I mean – I feel as if they made the right decision with the Renegades because they drew really well. And that was yeah. a team that you had Wade Phillips. When you did the documentary of Player 54, it was oh, yeah. on the Houston Ren- the, out, the I'm sorry, the Houston Renegades. No. Yeah, so that's the yeah. thing. So I apologize. I said that well, wrong. The, the Houston Roughnecks. I I apologize. Yeah. But yes, well, it was rough. Well, anyway, it was based at, around that. Well, anyway, look at Houston. You have a problem. Oh boy. <laughs> Houston I Roughnecks. I apologize. I mis I, I misspoke. But yes, and you know, I I did say this much. I want the fans to understand this too. My great friend who works media for the Houston Roughnecks. They're a great person. And they said themselves that they, they, they're glad the Kings come back, but they're also know that the team is not, not going to be the same new coach, no. No. most of the Gramblers. So there's going to be a lot of changes, even if you are a Houston Roughneck fan. Seven say that I'm curious to hear what you got to say, Lou, now that they've merged into one League, what are your thoughts now? I give it three weeks and it's going to be a buck. Forget it. <laughs> three Spring weeks football, and a buck. Spring football does not work. We tried so many times before. We've tried so many times in the last 50 years. And each uh, season, each league, with the exception of the uh, indoor league, has been a disaster. Okay, so let me ask you this. Do you think that coming into the next season, well, you know, in March when it starts up, do you think they're at a stronger point this time this year or a weaker point than they were last year? Weak, weak, weak. No one's – I don't think – I think very few people are going to care. I mean, they, they didn't care much with, with the other leagues to begin with. So this is going to be, you know, 
this is going to be even worse. I think it's even more of a down point. You know, I I can't. Football is king in this country, yes, but not this kind of football. Because we turn our attention to other sports by the time March April comes around. You know, we got baseball going into spring training. We got March Madness, NBA, and NHL play. Oh, it's around the corner. Uh, the indoor, the uh, new football leagues, you know, the USFL, the UFL, which actually was another league back in the uh, early part of the, of the uh, 2000s, uh, that didn't work either. So chances are, you know, if history is, if history is told anything, that it's not going to work. I don't know if I would say that far, but I will say this much. I agree with you on certain certain things. I I'm not a big fan of the March 30th start. I know it's spring football, but that is kind of late in the year. The great thing the XFL had was the fact that they started a week or so after, maybe two weeks right after the Super Bowl. So it's like yeah. if you still want, if you're still hungry for football, boom, you could just watch the XFL. Now you got a a month and a half almost of cool down period. And then at that time you got competing sports. Baseball is full in effect. March madness. You got too much stuff going on. And I think the timing is in is good more than anything. Like, you know, it's a very niche market and you've kind of made it tougher on people. Now I, I, you know, the March 30th thing, I'm not a big fan of. I'm not gonna lie to you. And you know, because you know, the other league that failed, of course, uh, not that long ago either. There's there's certain things that I, I do love about this merger, but there is some desirement too. Yeah. And you know, at least the good news is the teams that they did keep, they won't. Well, except for Texas, I guess Texas, yeah, because it gets kind of hot around May June. Oh, yeah. At least there's no Florida oh, team yeah. that, that's playing in, in you know, May, June, because that would be like, that'd be terrible. You, you know what I mean? Oh. It'd be so hot. It'd be ridiculously hot. And it rains a lot, too. But I definitely wish the league success. You know, I, I do want to be part of the UFL. Yeah. I know. I'm not, I'm not like Lou. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying it ain't going to work. I'm really hoping it does work. Because when you get a chance to meet some of the players, take it. Have we learned anything from the AAF? Oh boy! <laughs> so you like it's not going to work, period. I mean, that was the shortest in history. I don't think it didn't even, it didn't even finish out its season. Yeah, this thing got to work because if this thing does not fly, it is not going to be good for the Rock, Danny, and. Redbird Capital, it is it's gonna be a financial disaster. Mm. For their sake, they gotta prove you wrong because it's not gonna be a good look if it doesn't work. And yeah. I mean like you gotta you gotta be popping because yeah, it's not gonna be a good thing for Danny, it's not gonna be a good thing for the rock, especially the rock, I think. Yeah. A lot of the now they added more partners. Fox, you know, I mean, you've added more people to the plate. And one thing I did want to say to people who didn't know that Daryl Johnston is not out. The reports were coming out before they were saying he was out. Right. He's not technically out, folks. He's going to be the director of football operations. He's not going to be the CEO, Russ, Russ Brandon, who I actually had the honor of interviewing is going to be the new, the XFL basically CEO is going to stay the same, but Daryl Johnson is still going to be part of the UFL. It's just that he's going to be the director of operations. When you think he owns the world. Yeah, you know, that's crazy how they people thought that it was going to be USFL that was going to take over shop and end up being the opposite. You know what? You had a break for a couple of weeks. What do you got going on for your show this weekend? Well, yeah. Well, we are going to discuss uh, the uh, UFL, the UFL merger, the U.S. Football League. I mean, the United Football League. Sorry, uh, you know. Uh, uh, we'll, preview the well, preview the college football championship, of course, because we got the championship game Monday night. 
So we'll take care of that. We'll recap the semifinals. Uh, I'll even maybe uh, review from the uh, worst game of the week that we saw. And believe me, this was a doozy. Oh, Whew. Georgia, Florida State, what a disaster. Wow. Okay. Uh, we'll also preview uh, the new women's hockey league that started this past week. That's right, guys. The women's the professional hockey league has now has now begun. So we're gonna get your thoughts about that. So I'll be hearing from a lot more female callers out uh, this week as well. Uh, well, of course, we'll keep in touch with uh, NBA, NHL, up uh, week 18 of the of the uh, NFL. So final predictions uh, for the regular season this week as well. So get that ready. Uh, we'll also have the Radio sign of the week. Oh, if I got a good if I got a good start for that one. Oh boy. Uh, sports trivia this week in sports history. Your thoughts and comments. And something I haven't done in all the years I've been doing this. Um, I want your sports predictions for 2024. What have you got? And a few things that I didn't mention on the last show because I've added something to the list of the worst moments of the year. Now some are cons- now some I think I considered obvious. Uh, I'll let you on this. I don't know if you'll call it out, so I'll let you on. Of course, the um, American hockey uh, player who died in London, that was that was a tragic moment right there. Um, game of the year, of course, from last year's um, so-called championship football game. Ugh, that was awful. And the worst moment of the year of all, I think we all know what that is, of course. Yeah, don't we, Alan? <laughs> yep. Nope, nope, nope. Yep. nope. There's one more, there's one even worse than that. Which one? Travis Kelsey's performance on Saturday Night Live back in March. Oh, boy, was that awful. The biggest comic tragedy <laughs> of all time. Wow. Woo. That was awful. I had to turn this set off and I went out to get it on. Oh, my goodness. Wow. <laughs> so you got a great show coming up. Oh, in man, fact. that was awful. Wow. <laughs> so the great thing is we we definitely start off on the right foot. We have another and caller you also, might be familiar. Uh, you know, yep. and it's also starting season season seven now for the show here. So uh, you know it's been a Saturday tradition for six years, and uh, counting and looks to be more of a Saturday tradition as it goes on. And because twenty twenty four is a big year in the sports world, so I'm hoping that you know a lot of people can join us uh, this year. Because I think it's a year if you're a sports fan, you don't want to miss. I know I don't. Absolutely. You got a lot of great things going on. In fact, we're starting up on the right foot. We have another caller on the line I think you might be familiar with. Let me bring them on. Oh, yeah. What a good day. Hey, how you doing? Good. How are you? I know we're doing great. <laughs> how you doing? Good. That's awesome, and it's going to be a great 2024 already. So I got two legends on the line now. All right. I I be another. Yes, but, but you know, know what? Folks, uh, we actually know each other. Yeah. yeah. Geez, that's absolutely right. We we all know each other. Really appreciate you guys all the time supporting the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. In fact, I want to get your thoughts on it, Diane. Your team, you win, you're in. Believe it or not, do you think they're going to win? Yeah. I villain. hope so. I you really know what? hope they win. I hope so, too. You know, for them to – you thought they were dead man walking over the last three to four weeks, and they just came <laughs> on strong. They came yeah. on strong. I, I got to give them credit where credit is due. They they surprised me because I was thinking that they were going to get written off this year. They came out of nowhere and kept winning, and I think they're going to win and get in. They're going to win and get in. That's my my thoughts. Yes. And teams and teams that are like the Bills, you got to be careful. So you're not too happy about that, Lou? No, but you do got to be careful. I mean, because. You know, Buffalo's had very a, a very strange season. You know, they lost the first game, then they got a hot streak, and then they ran like a buzzsaw with Miami. And, you know, it's a kind of a mediocrity at best. So, um, you know, it's, this is going to be a very critical, critical game uh, for the Bills. Yeah, I, I but, actually hope they do make it. And the reason why yeah. I say that is because I feel as if they've earned it. I really do. Yes. For, for them to have such a seesaw season – a lot of teams at this point, 
three, four weeks ago would have just kind of tanked and just really went from bad to terrible. They didn't. They balled out, and they have a chance to win, and you're in. See, to me, player, as a fan, all you can hope for is your team has a chance to win, and you're in. You you don't really have a complaint if you don't make it, if you don't do another situation and don't make it. Let's say you lose, and you got to hope another team wins or loses or tie. To me, that's just like a, you know, a Hail Mary pass when you're down by two touchdowns. You can't expect that to make you get into the playoffs. A win and you're in is what you want. Yes, of course. Yes. But I hope you're, I hope I hope you're I hope you're right. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you're Isn't right. Another Mac Hunt reception? Oh boy. And they make it. And you guys are both gonna be on the call tomorrow, right? Oh yeah. Absolutely. I'm calling. Late there you go. I am calling. too. I am too. It's gonna be the By first the way, show of the year. I definitely gotta be there. I got good news for you, Dodge. Devils won 4-2 over the Blackhawks. Yay! Oh, wow. <laughs> the Blackhawks are... Breaking are, news. How can they, they get this new guy, Bernard, out for probably Rookie of the Year considerations when the team was nothing but a trash dump? You are not, wor- you are not worthy of Rookie of the Year when, that, when your team is that bad. I'm sorry. So who is worthy of Rookie of the Year? Yeah, we'll find that out. But but not, but Bednar is not is not your guy. I mean, Chicago is just done awful from the from the start of the season. Same thing with um, Victor Wembanyama, who of course was a talk about all during the all season whatnot. And look what that yeah, look what um, their team has done. They've only won five games this year so far. Okay, yeah, he's done good, but you you know you can't you are not carrying this team. You are really not. One player does not make a team. Exactly, that's my point. You know, nobody can choose in a team. You think you're a one-man show, and for the majority, you've lost about, oh, 85% of your games already. So are you worthy for for a uh, rookie of the year? Uh-uh. No. What team are you talking about? <laughs> well, we're talking about Victor Wimbayana. Uh, you know, he was a target of all the offseason. And Betnar for the Chicago Blackhawks. Which is wait, wait, who's Wimbayana? What team is he from? San Antonio. Okay. San Antonio Spurs. The youth is okay. so good too. The youth be good. But then again, he's you know, a good player. Yeah, but the rest of the team wasn't doing anything. Well, well, Spurs he's going. Diana's right. One team, yeah. one player, he could be great, but one he's not going to make the whole team. Show. NBA is not. Are the Spurs show. any good? They used to be back in the nineties. We had David Robinson, but since then, nope. Okay. <laughs> then again, I got yep. remember one thing. This is uh, this is twenty twenty four, not nineteen ninety four. Of course. Yeah, of course. Yes. <laughs> hey, yeah, that's right. But yeah, make sure, <laughs> folks, you support the Enhanced Sports Show tomorrow between four and six four and six p.m. Eastern Standard Time Zone. The phone number is 512-543-4662, 512-543-4662. And also, don't forget to check them out on YouTube. Just type in Enhanced Sports Show, and you'll get a chance to see the legend himself, Lou. And I'm going to make sure I call in tomorrow between 4 and 6, for sure. Right. And remember, guys, at East Coast time. That's right, 4 and 6, Eastern Standard Time Zone, Saturday, tomorrow. Yeah, well, is this a, is this a first? Is this a first to you two calls at the same time? It's the first time. Yes, yeah, the first time she called in at the same time as me. So at uh, same but, time as you. Was, yep, same I time was, as you. I wasn't sure if we did one call at a time. I thought that's how your show was done. The nice thing is, I couldn't let this opportunity go by. That tells me right there, I'm gonna have a fantastic 2024. The fact that you guys well, call at the same time. It's never happened before. You know, in the four or five years I've been calling this show, I, I don't recall it. Yeah, that's the first time I don't. I'm not calling later next time. <laughs> yeah, I don't recall her ever calling in while you were on the line. So no, it was my it was my fault. It was my fault because usually, you know, we start right away. But I knew I didn't know you were going to a long report of the uh, UFL merger. So I was going. Yeah. I told her to call you about close to ten. So you know that was kind of like my fault. But you know, but I'm glad we did it. I am too. You know what? It worked out great. I'm glad you did yeah. call in at the top of the yeah. show. 
the merger talk, I had to let people know that because I know a lot of people have been asking and want to hear my opinion on this, being I covered the get the Guardians for the 2023 season. So I had to get that out. It doesn't happen all the time. Hopefully we don't lose yep. another team. But I'm glad you guys yeah. called in, and I'm, it all worked out. That's how we all know 2024 is going to be magnificent for all three of us and mm-hmm. the fans, all four. Yep. And season, <laughs> season seven starts tomorrow. I can't believe it's, I can't believe it's that, that many years I've been doing this now. It's going to be my seventh year of doing this show. And in March, it'll be my ninth year since I went national. Wow. Wow. Time flies. Wow. I'm trying to catch up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that we appreciate you guys. Me. No, it's not. And keep on keep that, that truck moving. Yeah. And you caught one night. Oh, yeah. Great. All right. On that note, I'll take my uh, adieu, and then we'll call back, I'll call back next week, same time, and hopefully I'll hear from you guys for tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking forward to talking to you tomorrow to start the year off right. You too, Diane. You got to call in too. Yeah, of you course will. I'm going to call in. All right. In all so the years, I'm... you've only missed twice. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to talking to you guys again tomorrow. Yeah. I hope the both of you have a wonderful night, and I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Let's put it this way. Uh, if this was a match game, I would be Charles Nelson Riley, should be Brett. No, you would be Charles Nelson Riley, should be Brett Summers, I'd be Gene Raper or Richard Dawson. Oh, <laughs> Good night. <Yep. laughs> all right. Appreciate you guys. <laughs> Appreciate you guys. Have a blessed night. You Thank too, you. Alan. Thank you so much, Diane. Appreciate you. You're the best. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a, talk to you tomorrow. Yeah. Take care now. Bye bye now. You too. Take care. Yeah, so that's great. First time in 2024, first time in the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show history. Both Lou and Diane call at the same time. That has never happened. That's how you know great things are going to happen in 2024. And that's the great thing about it is when life throws you lemons, you make lemonade. You know, At the end of the day, with the smerger, I personally was affected. I know all the players were affected, coaches, fans. And it dep- as I was saying a month ago, depending on who you are in relation to the league, it's going to affect you differently. I know people are going to be affected. If you were one of the teams that stuck around and you were a fan, probably not going to affect you. You're probably, you know, jumping for joy. But the, your connection with the league is going to make the biggest difference. One thing that is going to be really cool is the fact that the two teams, Arlington Renegades, who I had the pleasure of being at the championship game, that was awesome. And that's another great thing for you guys to always remember in life. Do like Eminem. If you had one shot or one opportunity to seize everything you ever wanted in one moment, would you capture it or just let it slip? In life, you got to seize opportunities when they're presented to you. You cannot kind of push them to the side and say, you know what, I'll get back to it in a week, two weeks, a month. Because when you do that, you may never get that opportunity. First year in the league, the XFL league, team was one and nine. The Orlando Guardians were not going to make the playoffs. I let the, the XFL know probably about four weeks left. So the Guardians weren't exactly eliminated if they did basically the flip of what the Arlington Renegades did when four games straight, they had a chance to make the playoffs. And I would have to say the saddest time, it's kind of like strolling down memory lane, but the saddest time that I had actually covering the XFL was only one moment. And that was when the Guardians were officially eliminated, which was game right after Right after they won that big game against the D.C. Defenders, the next week, they lost to the Arlington Renegades, who ended up winning the champs. That game basically signified they were mathematically eliminated. And that was the hardest day for me to ask questions, try to be enthusiastic, because I knew at that very point I was going to go to the championship game, 
but I knew I was not going to be covering the Orlando Guardians because they lost and were eliminated. But the long story short, I continued with the league and told them I do have an interest in covering the championship game. They blessed me with the opportunity to cover the game. I had the chance to interview quite a few of the Arlington Renegades before they left for the championship game. And while we were in San Antonio, I got a chance to interview quite a few of the D.C. defenders as well as the Arlington Renegades. Watch the championship game. It was a magnificent, magnificent experience. Nothing less than magnificent. And I got a chance to experience that all because of the fact of you guys supporting and me doing, as I mentioned to you, taking advantage of the opportunities when they presented. Do that in 2024. Take advantage of opportunities when they presented to you. Get the experience, whether it works out great or not. I'm not bad. I'm not bitter. I'm not angry about the fact that the garden is gone and this merger went through. It's official. I'm just disappointed, you know, that I'm looking forward to year two, but we're still going to have the spring football, a lot to go forward to. I will keep you posted on my status with the UFL and keep you guys up to date as to the next moves and steps. A lot to happen in Allen Alfred Sports Suck show. Great thing is we're going to speak into existence right now. You and I, you the listener and myself, Alan Alfred, Sports Talk Show, we are together going to have a magnificent 2024 with God's blessing. A lot of great things are going to happen this year for, for everyone. We're going to shift gears and talk now about the NFL. Oh, before I do that, before I get into the NFL, let me just go ahead and give a round of applause to Shaquille O'Neal, Big Shaq. Shaquille O'Neal is being honored and the only first and only player in Orlando Magic history, their numbers being retired and put up in the rafters. So big props to Big Shaq. That is magnificent, folks. That is something to be really, really proud of. So we're going to go ahead and talk. Now we're going to switch gears and talk NFL, you know, as I was mentioning to Lou, that's the best case scenario you want to be in as a player. You win and you're in. And the great thing is this weekend, both Saturday and Sunday, there are quite a few teams where it's very simple, regardless of whether the, what other options happen. As long as you win, you're in. That's all you want as a player. So there's quite a few teams that are in that situation. Got to start with the Bucks. What's at stake? The Bucks are playing the Carolina Panthers on Sunday at 1 o'clock p.m., and it's going to be televised on Fox. What's at stake is very simple. Tampa Bay Bucks, they win. The Tampa Bay Bucks will clinch the NFC South with a win. If they don't win, <laughs> then they have to tie then New Orleans has to lose or tie. Another way they can clinch a playoff is if the Tampa Bay ties plus Seattle loss plus Green Bay loss or tie. See see how that's – you can't – Tampa Bay Bucks win, they're in. Very simple. Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys clinch the NFC East title with a win. And I'm going to just talk about the teams that you win and you're in. Then, you know, I'll touch on some of the teams where you might have what-if scenarios. Jacksonville Jaguars are in that position. They will clinch the AFC South title if they win. Another team talked about just a little bit ago was the Buffalo Bills. They win, they're in. So I love those situations where it's very straightforward. That's what you want as a player. If you get down to this point, you want to be in a situation where if you win your next game, you are in. Where teams say, oh, we could have won if this happened or this happened. You know what? Even if it's my team. Three words. Cry me a river. Cry me a Well, actually, that's four words. Cry me a river. 
cry me a river. You know, very simple. If you playing and you're balling and you get to the point where this team got to tie, this team got to win, that other team got to lose, and you got to win, and then you're in. To me, if you get in like that, that's great. But if you don't get in, you have no complaints. Cry me a river. So we're going to stick with the teams that you basically, you win, you're in. The Indianapolis Colts clinches the AFC South title. You know, they'll clinch a playoff berth if they, they win. There is some what-if scenarios, but I'm not going to get into that. Another team that came out of nowhere and have a chance, and that's the Houston Texans. They're playing the Indianapolis Colts. If they win, they're in. The Houston Texans. Houston clinches the AFC South title with a win. So those are the teams there. You win and you're in. You make sure. Like the Saints, New Orleans clinches the NFC, type, NFC South title if New Orleans wins plus Tampa Bay loss or tie. See, meaning you could still win and not make it in this last week. That That's a what if scenario. The Philadelphia Eagles, Philadelphia Eagles clinch the NFC South, the, I'm sorry, the NFC East title with them winning plus Dallas loses or tie. So they need to win, and they got to hope that the Cowboys lose or tie. And there's only a few more teams here. Seattle Seahawks are playing Arizona. How the Seahawks can clinch is if they win plus Green Bay loses or ties. Seattle ties plus Green Bay loss plus Tampa Bay loss or tie. Seattle tie plus Green Bay loss, plus New Orleans loss or tie. <laughs> it's a lot. You know what? I got to give props to the people who think these things through, man. That just gets, it just gets confusing. And last but not least, the Minnesota Vikings can clinch a playoff berth. Minnesota wins, plus Green Bay loss, plus Seattle loss, plus Tampa Bay loss, or Minnesota wins, plus Green Bay loss, plus Seattle loss, plus New Orleans loss. So I got to give people props who come up with those what-if scenarios, but that's a good rundown there. And, you know, that's the thing. It's getting down to the nitty-gritty. You know, that's what it is. You know, right now, I, I know that the Chiefs have been – you know, kind of not like they have been in the past, but I would not out of the team that have been strong in last year and are kind of waffling this year, the chiefs to me still are the team to beat. Meaning everything they did this year really doesn't matter once they get into the playoffs and they are, they have already made it. So they're still the team. I feel you have to watch out for Yes. They haven't had a great season. Like, we're used to seeing, accustomed to seeing, but they still are a dangerous team and they can still put it together. Travis Kelsey, to me, you know, he's had a couple of good game, really great games this year, but it hasn't been the Travis Kelsey we're used to. Mahomes isn't the same Mahomes we're used to. Definitely all those drops are not what we're used to. So those things have to be cleaned up. But if they get it together, which we've seen that they can, especially in the postseason, I wouldn't write them off just yet. That's the Chiefs. Having said that, Lamar Jackson is going to get the MVP. I know that some people said that, oh, he shouldn't get it because he's uh, the just because he's a great athlete. Listen, folks, those are people who don't really know about the game. Yes, he's a great athlete. But the guy's been passing and making plays just phenomenally. I mean, the thing about it is I feel, and I've had Lamar Jackson as my fantasy football quarterback before in the past. And I will tell you this year, which he's going to get the MVP, I had him the year that he got the MVP before. 
for the season. And I will tell you, that time, he had more flash than he does now. Meaning, there's some time where he sits in the pocket looking to throw to someone so much so that I'm like, Lamar, just go ahead and take off. Where I feel like he stays in the pocket a little too long now. I guess it's, you know, as you get older, you don't want to be running around. But, yeah, he's made some plays with his legs. But, man, believe me and you, he's been sitting back there throwing more than he normally does ever. And, in fact, he's gotten a few sacks this year where I felt as if he stayed back there too long. Where he, there was a great opportunity for him to just take off after he did two or three reads, just go, and he still stuck back there. One of the things that my dad used to always say that I'm going to tell you guys, always give credit where credit is due. He's not just getting MVP because he's the best athlete. He's getting the MVP because he was the best quarterback this year, period. He was the best quarterback this year. The most consistent, the most the player that if the Ravens did not have, their team would not have locked up the number one seed and, and beyond. Okay? He was the best player. Let's look at the facts. I had Mahomes in one of my leagues too. Mahomes did not have a Mahomes type year. A lot of picks, not a lot of flash. He didn't have Tyreek Hill. It showed in his yardage. It showed in his runs. He wasn't as quick as well. I would even have to say, with all due respect, Jalen Hurts was probably probably even worse. I mean, I think he's been lifting, I said this before, I think he's been lifting too much weight, and now he's too muscle-bound. He seems slow. And, and at the beginning of the year, I gave him some leeway because I know he was injured. He was taking care of a knee. But throughout the whole year, I watched a lot of his games, and he's just slow. I think he's just doing too much heavy lifting. I know it works for the tush. All that muscle has really slowed him down at lifting that too much weight. So Mahomes have went down a couple of notches. So have not to take anything away from Lamar, but let's let's look at what it is. Jalen Hurts, and then there's really you know I mean Brock Purdy had a chance. He was having like one of his career type years, but when it came and the rubber hit the road, and when times where it really mattered to step up and be the MVP. Yeah, he he kind of he kind of faltered. And definitely when they played head to head this last game, it was a wrap. So, he's going to get it as far as Christian McCaffrey. I would have said a couple of weeks ago, yes. You know, week 15 or 16, yes. McCaffrey would have probably had my vote. But these last 3 games Two or three games really cemented Lamar getting it. He played like an MVP against the top, the best of the best in the league. You know, he showed that he's he's the man, and that's what it is. And I know McCaffrey's been doing his thing this year. He's been doing his thing, but I'm just gonna be real with you. Being a quarterback in the NFL is is a tough, tough gig. Not easy. It's not easy to do that. And not to say being a running back is easy, but you just have to you have to do a lot more to be a quarterback. And that's the reason why coaches want to get along with their quarterbacks. The quarterback is the most I'll say it at once and I say it again. Maybe Richard Sermon to turn this part off, lower it down. I know every player wants to feel as if their position is the most important on the football team. I will tell you, there is no other position that is more important on the offensive side than the quarterback. It's just, that's what it is. That's the brains. That's the leader of the team. That's the one who has to make decisions to check it down to your running back or throw it to someone down the field or throw to someone else. You know, on the sideline. And those decisions got to be made quick while somebody's barreling down on you. You got to be smart. You got to be intelligent. You got to be real quick with your decision. And then if nothing all all else fails, you got to make things, make your own offense. Like they say in the NBA, you got to go ahead and run and make your own offense. So there's a lot more things to do. When you get the ball and a running back, you just catch it and go. You know, not taking away from anything. You got to be smart and intelligent there too. But there's there's just levels to it. That's just the way it goes. And I feel as if that's just the way it goes. You know, a 
coach is going to, then most coaches are going to basically cater to the quarterback more than they are going to be to positional play because they know that another positional player they can replace. You get another quarterback, you got to teach them the whole playbook. You got to teach them what you want, what you don't want. It's a lot that goes into it. Props to Lamar Jackson because I know he's going to be be that getting that MVP. You can almost etch in the stone right now. And you know what? You got to count your blessings too. You got to count your blessings, and that's what I'm doing. I'm very, very thankful for being back for another year in 2024 for the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show to entertain you guys, bring you a lot to desire. Going to be eating breakfast with another great legend, Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce. We'll be doing that tomorrow morning. I'm going to play the Chef G's Barbecue Sauce song again in just a few moments. But yeah, and um, I did want to say something out there to a lot of the people. You know, this happened at the end of last year, so we'll just put it on last year's bill. But I'm going to say that I'm not a fan of EA Sports, and they did my son dirty for the holiday season. Make a long story short, you know, I'm just going to tell you what happened. This is my opinion, but my son had purchased gift card for EA Sports, and, you know, we basically told, I told him don't do it because EA is kind of shady. They love to kind of take advantage of kids playing sports, you know, into their sports games or video games. They want to make you buy things on the, you know, points and stuff. And a lot of times they don't always give it to you. It's it's a lot of that stuff going on. We we were reluctant. We went ahead and, you know, son was real motivated to get those points. So, you know, he's a big fan of Madden. 2024, we got those points. Got the card. Guess what? It said you're good to go. Well, we weren't good to go because the points weren't actually entered into the account. I've been going back and forth, back and forth with EA Sports, and we're still going in circles, folks. So, you know, (laughs) definitely not cool EA Sports, so they get this. Yep, there you go, folks. And that's my take on that. But we're not going to let that stop us here in 2024. We're going to have a big year. We're going to have a big, big year here at the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. You got to feel that way, too, folks. You got to feel that you're going to have a big year. Got to be positive. Can't let these things, you know, get you down. And I'm not going to do that. We have a lot going on in 2024 already lined up. I don't want to spoil the surprises that we have going on for 2024. You have to kind of wait and see what the year brings to you. I wanted to go ahead and play the Sam Scola song right now. This is the Jeff G's Florida barbecue sauce. Again, it's so delicious and addicting. You may need a support group. Definitely do not forget. Write this down. In fact, do not forget to get yourself a great four pack of Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. So delicious and addicting, you may need a support group. Make sure you check out Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce at flbbqsauce.com. Again, it's flbbqsauce.com. Also, make sure that you don't forget to check out his spot, his new location at 301 South 22nd Street. Tampa, Florida, and that's 301 South 22nd Street, Tampa, Florida. He'll be glad to see you. Here is the Sam Scola Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce song right here on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. Counting for the variety, Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce. Natural flavor, Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce, Florida gold honey mustard on burgers and ribs, tasty fusion on pork and sausage, a classic taste for chicken steak tips, a hot on meatballs and ham. It's the 
It's a cookout treat. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Serve on fish and vegetables. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. FG's Florida Barbecue Sauce, so delicious and addicting, you may need a support group. Don't forget, check it out at flbbqsauce.com, flbbqsauce.com. Want to thank you guys for listening again to the Alan Alfred Sports Talk Show. Please, if you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe to the Facebook channel as well as the YouTube channel. All you got to do is type in Alan Alfred. Follow me on Instagram right there. Makes it easy. A L A N A L F O R D. A L A N A L F O R D. Really appreciate you guys always here on the Allen Alfred Sports Hook Show. Always a pleasure to do this show. Glad to be back for the 2024. Another great season, another great year. Got a lot of great things to expect. So definitely, I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys again. Same bat place, same bat channel, Friday, 8.30 p.m. uh, CST time, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I got to get used to saying it, the CST time first, 8.30 p.m. So definitely take care. Have a great weekend. Be blessed. Be well. And have a fantastic 2024. Do as I said. Stay positive. Keep going. Seize the opportunity, and you will have a great 2024. So we talk again. Take care. Be blessed and be well. Going to end the show with the great Sam Scola. Again, don't forget to reach out to me here at the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. Reach out to me. Definitely want to thank Sam Scola and his great, beautiful wife, Mary, there in Maine. Guys, take care and be blessed. I'll talk to you again soon. Take care for now. Oh